Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. In today's episode, we're going to be revisiting something called const expert, which is a really great feature of C++11, which allows you to do work at compile time. Well, potentially at compile time. And then we're actually going to push this lesson a little bit further and talk about const eval. Now, this is the new and interesting thing that we're going to focus on, which came in C++20. And this means that we get more guarantees for compile time function execution, or CTFE as it's known in other languages like D. But again, this ensures that something must be evaluated at compile time versus const expert, which is more of a maybe. So anyways, we'll talk about that. Let's go ahead and dive into CPP reference to learn a little bit more here. Now, where I'm going to look at this is I'm going to go into declarations here and I'm going to want to search for uh, basically this block here. So if you scroll down, you'll find something like your const expert, which we talked about here and then const eval and then const init. We're going to check uh, in on const init if you watch the next video here. So make sure you're subscribed for that. But again, today I want to review const eval, const expert, and then also const, just because we want to you know, keep in mind what all these things are that start with const and what that actually means. So uh, let's go ahead and just kind of keep this highlighted here. And let's do some examples with const expert just to remind ourselves of what we're working with here. So in C++11, we are given this const expert here, which is kind of a interesting thing here. I mean, and it's um, const expert is allowed in variable definitions, functions, and function template declarations, uh, as well as for static members. So there was kind of this common thing in the C++ world where you said, you know, const expert, all the things, so to speak. There are a few great talks. Uh, Jason Turner, some other folks uh, discussed this. Uh, I think Ben Dean might have given a talk on this, uh, who are folks who have given lots of great uh, talks that you can check out. Um, but the basic idea is, let's say we have some uh, function here, and I'll give the sort of one of the classic ones here. So const expert uh, add uh, function here. Uh, and again, being a little bit lazy with auto, but, you know, we could template this and, you know, make it a, you know, super interesting add function here, but let's just do something simple here, like A plus B here. Um, so now uh, let's go ahead and try to use this here. And let's just go ahead and give ourselves some sort of function here uh, that we want to, or, or rather a result here, add four or five here. Uh, and then let's actually write this out here. Uh, let's use print here, uh, just because sometimes I use C out, uh, but let's use print. Let's get with the modern C plus plus twenty three error here, which is those of you that, you know folks watching this, <laughs> just so we can uh, see this here. Get a little bit of practice with modern stuff here, and let's go ahead and compile that. Oops, uh, oh, what did I do here? Oops, must have messed up my paths. But if you want to do the print line, you can just do that here. Uh, here, let me go back here. We're, we'll go back old school. Uh, all right, that's what I get for installing a new uh, version of Ubuntu prior to this video. <laughs> Anyways, uh, all right, we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, it works just fine, prints everything out here. Now, um, what I really want to know here, though, is was this evaluated at compile time? Was this evaluated at runtime? I mean, I don't, I don't really know here. I mean, and just to go ahead and show that, let's go ahead and just say we have some variable here like n, um, which again is not really known. I mean, it's not initialized here. And let's go ahead and try to say like four and n. Let's go ahead and add these values. Uh, and we'll go ahead and, you know, print these out here. Uh, there we go. And again, I want to go ahead and see here. Yeah, let's just use my regular G++ here. Um, I mean, it added this. I mean, clearly there's just garbage in this value n here. Um, but we don't really know. I mean, I can... I mean, even let's let's put in like a regular value here so it's less garbagey. Um, I mean, do we know if this was evaluated at compile time or not? I mean, it's it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, we do have a tool that we can use, for instance, to help us with this, and that is the awesome compiler explorer. So let's go ahead and flip over to that here. And I mean, the, basically what we're going to do here is try to see if the assembly that was generated is just the value nine here and the value 11 here, right? Was the compiler smart enough to just figure out, you know, what this this value was and, and effectively get rid of this here? Um, so let's kind of look through this uh, assembly code here. Um, let's see here what we got here. So uh, I'm looking for the green stuff here. I mean, it looks like it is calling this add function here. OK, it's not doing the like const expert thing here. So um, in, in this particular example, I mean, I just see one line here. Okay, so 
if I make this const so that it can't change, let's see, do we get less green lines there basically? Or I guess the color changed to orange now. <laughs> but basically I wanna see, did I get rid of that call here? Uh, and it looks like I did, right? In the value, uh, hex value C, right? So if A is 10, B is 11, and C is, uh, or oops, I'm reading this uh, wrong here. Yeah, this is the value you want. Uh, A is 10, B is 11, so there we go here. <laughs> um, that is just writing out the value 11, right? So it's able to basically evaluate this at compile time. So again, the, the issue with const expert um, is uh, may uh, evaluate at compile time or runtime, okay? Now, uh, what we wanna look at in this video is uh, C++20 const eval, okay? And basically what this is a must evaluate at compile time, okay? So much, much, much stronger, uh, but we don't have to do this guesswork of like looking at the assembly or anything uh, to see if this is actually gonna be evaluated. In fact, let's get rid of our stream here just so this is a little bit cleaner here. Um, as far as the uh, code that we're looking at here, right? So again, this this fits in one line, uh, which is very nice. But again, as soon as I get rid of that const here for const expert, uh, and we'll do this as two examples. Yeah, you see, we have to set up the stack frame, make the function call, and so on, right? Whereas most of us, if we're distributing this to our users, are happy to pay the compilation time so that our user has less work to do. Okay, so again, that's the advantage of uh, const expert and these sorts of things. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at const eval. Now, one of the differences you're going to notice is this, this is only allowed on uh, functions and function template declarations. Const expert, you can put on variable definitions like anything here, okay? And we're going to see that const eval and const init, which came in C20, basically say const init, that's going to be for the variables. Const eval, that's going to be for the functions, okay? That's, that's the basic idea. So we sort of split this up in C20 here. Um, I mean, it becomes a very good question as to you know, should you actually use const expert when we can use this const eval thing now? I don't have a great answer other than maybe it's try const eval as much as possible. <laughs> and then if you have some like generic functions that you know might be at compile time or might be at run time, um, then const expert is like the more generic thing. So we do need both of these tools um, for us, okay? So uh, just, just keep that in mind. We're not totally like, you know, wasting our, our time here by having these other keywords are good things. So, so const eval uh, specifier uh, declares a function or function template uh, to be an immediate function, or that is, you know, potentially uh, every potentially evaluated call. So every potentially evaluated call to the function must be uh, produce a compile time value. Okay. So let's again, just play with this a little bit. Let's do it in compiler explorer just so we can see it actually. Uh, and I'm going to call this uh, const eval or put this const eval uh, declaration here um, on our code here. We're going to write the same add function here. So let's just copy this here, right? So I don't need to do anything like too crazy to my function here. Same thing here. It's just taking in two values that must be known at compile time here. Uh, now let's see here. I might need to add in C23 here. I don't know what the default is. Uh, now it's saying a redefinition of add here, right? The declarations actually aren't part of the name mangling or we're able to overload the functions. So sometimes I call it CTFE. That's because I've learned it from the D programming language that way, but compile time function execution. Uh, but if you want to do CTFE or, you know, put, put a conf, um, like a const eval after it or something, uh, I don't know. I, either one of those naming conventions is probably fine. I'm going to use CTFE here because uh, that's what I'm used to in the D uh, programming language world. Um, but let's go ahead and comp uh, kind of do this same example here, CTFE and CTFE here. Uh, I'm just going to call this M here and M. How about that here? Uh, and let's just call this uh, result uh, three and four would be appropriate, three and four. And in the instance that you want to actually print these out to verify them, uh, we will uh, have the ability to do that. Uh, and let's make sure that we have all of our variables here. Um, so, I mean, let's see what kind of errors we're, we're getting here. Uh, what's going on here? It's not compiling. It's saying, hey, call to const eval function is not a constant expression, right? Because M is not known here. Now, if I make this const here, uh, let's see, does that uh, solve our worries here? Uh, it does, right? Same, same way. 
uh, that we had before here. Uh, the difference here, which I think we can sort of see in this example, is const expert is again a maybe uh, evaluate at compile time, and this is a must evaluate at compile time, right? Because this one is like, hey, you know, we can have this integer value, it'll still do it, but yeah, we got unlucky in some ways, and it, you know, the compiler just wasn't smart enough to know, like, n could have changed here, right? The user could come in here and say n is now five or whatever, right? And things can change uh, because it's not a, uh, value even even though we can we can see this you know we just can't have that guarantee right maybe there's an aggressive compiler optimization somewhere that says yeah i can prove that n is not modified between this function call and you know this thing again it gets a little bit more complicated but that's the idea here so anyways focusing on the const eval version here this we definitely know the constant values four and five that are coming in here so we can produce nine and evaluate this and this m here yeah this is a constant value so you know if i scroll down here to uh this code here um let's reveal the link code here um uh, i should be able to see here uh, and again i'm just highlighting over it so you can see where it's flashing here at, at this uh line here yeah i'm getting zero b here uh, just to make this here let's make this more apparent let's just make this one here so we can see a zero x five uh show up there give it a moment to compile here um, and let's see, let's reveal the link code. There we go. Zero X five here. Okay. And then you got the one above it that again was of course evaluated. So I guess let's try to make this a little bit more interesting, uh, where I have a const eval thing here. Let's result five. And what if I try to use something that's const expert in it, uh, here const expert, uh, oops, or, or rather our add function. And I put in four and five here. Let's see how smart this engine is. Is this able to figure out that, yeah, we can evaluate this at compile time so that we can compile this? Uh, it looks like it is smart enough, okay? So you can use const eval stuff with const expert. Uh, let's reveal the link code again here. Uh, yeah, we get uh, the value of four plus nine here, 13, which is hex uh, D here. I think if I highlight over it, you'll see 13. Really nice tool there. <laughs> um, so that's that's the idea. So it can work with uh, const, uh, so must evaluate uh, at compile time. I'll say can work with const expert as long as that, uh, you know, const expert thing evaluated at compile time. Okay, so you don't lose any uh, disadvantage if you have a bunch of const expert code. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's the basic idea here. So, uh, again, uh, if I could summarize this in two words, if you're just hopping in the video, uh, const expert functions like this one add may or may not evaluate at compile time. You don't know, but you can still use it. Right. So this is kind of like, Hey, try your best, you know, try if you can prove it. Uh, but const eval is a must evaluate at compile time. So it was really nice in C++ 20 that we get this sort of guarantee here that says, yeah, just, just do the stricter thing. And if you can't evaluate it, let us know. Uh, and of course you can mix const eval with const expert stuff as long as that const expert expression does indeed evaluate at compile time. All right, folks. So with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson here. Uh, kind of a simple one. Um, I guess the, uh, thing to note that, uh, or last thing that I want to note is, um, I can still, uh, you know, do like result five plus plus here. Okay. Uh, right. I could still mutate this, uh, value here. I guess that's the last thing that I want to say here about this. Uh, let's give it a moment to generate the code here. Let's, uh, reveal the link code here, uh, or just scroll down to it here. Reveal. There we go. Uh, so I got this value here, result five here. Oh, there it is. Um, and I got, well, I guess, uh, it's just doing an add instruction to this address here of one here. Uh, so basically what I want to say here is, uh, here, let me try to make it more, oh, that's too big of a number here. Uh, I think it's going to be the same. I think it's going to generate the same assembly code actually, my bad. <laughs> but my point is, um, const eval itself, uh, let's see const um let's see does not have anything to do with making the uh resulting uh you know variable that stores the function the const eval function 
result uh, immutable. Okay, uh, so so all I'm saying is result five is perfectly fine. You can change. Uh, the point is that this expression here is just evaluated into some constant here. Okay, so that you can store the value here, and then of course you can, um, you know modify it here, right? I'm adding one, that's what this OX1 is to the thing that's at this address, which is this constant expression that is storing 13 from our const eval function here. Okay, so that's the idea here. Just wanted to show you one level here. Hopefully that gives you a good summary of const eval though versus const expert. So const expert may or may not be evaluated at compile time or runtime. Uh, also nothing to do with making the variable function const, okay? I know that's a little bit confusing, but that's like constant uh, expression or something. Uh, I mean, it might be better to like rename this maybe, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know what a better name would be for const expert. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one on the fly here, but it'd be like maybe evaluable at compile time or runtime. And this is always evaluable const eval. So uh, I would maybe call it like comp time eval or something, uh, but that's a little bit too long for folks. So anyways, that's const eval. If you've wondered what this mysterious thing is that's uh, popping up in your code base, it's a good thing. I would encourage it. And uh, and we're going to talk about const init in the next lesson. So you can find those lessons and more on courses.mshot.io. Here's the same uh, lessons that you're following and you can track your progress. There's other great stuff on here too. Check it out. Uh, but let me know if that helps you out with const eval, if you're already using it, if you found speed performance bonuses in your code, that would be really interesting. I mean, I imagine for things like regular expressions or so on, uh, if you're like computing those at compile time, this could be one of the big wins. That's sort of the case in the D language where a lot of the compile time advantage uh, compile time function execution engine has shown some huge wins over time, as well as just, you know, trying to make as much of your code available at compile time is probably good for the end user uh, at the trade-off of compile time speed. So anyways, folks, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.